Hello, my name is Pat Allen, and I'm an interviewer for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress. And this is being done at the Cincinnati Hamilton County Library. Today is August the 7th, 2019, and the director of the project here in Cincinnati is Brian Powers. Brian also is our cameraman today, and oftentimes Brian will have questions of our veteran. And today, we have the privilege of uh, interviewing James B. Walton. Mr. Walton. Pat. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Uh, is it okay if I refer to you by Jim or do you Absolutely. go by James? Absolutely. Uh, Jim's fine. Jim, okay. Jim, uh, before we get into your military career, let's talk a little bit about your, your background. Uh, where and when were you born? I was born uh, here in Cincinnati Jewish Hospital on uh, July 24th, 1945. All right. And uh, what were your parents' names? My father's name was John. Uh, my mother's name was May. And do you know uh, when your dad was born? Uh, he was born uh, De uh, December 16, 1915. And your mother? 5 18 19. Did you say 1915? Yes, sir. You have 16 on your interview sheet. Did I have 16? Uh, I think it was 16, Walt. It was 16. Okay. And uh, wh what was your mother's maiden name? Blake. And uh, her full name is uh, what? Uh, May Mabel Blake. Right. And uh, where, did, uh, where did they live after you were born? <sighs> Numerous. Uh, started out in Winton Place. Winton Place? Yes, sir. Is that here in Cincinnati? Yes, sir. It's off of Spring Grove. Right by Scrim Grove Cemetery there. All right. Uh, and then we moved over to Kentucky, and most of our life was spent in Dayton, Kentucky. And where is Dayton, Kentucky? It's in northern Kentucky, right next to Bellevue. It's about uh, two or three miles east of uh, Newport. All right. Well, people may look at this interview and, and listen to this interview and not know the locations oh, of where we're talking about. Absolutely. That's why, why yeah. I asked you about that. Uh, all right. Uh, how about brothers and sisters? How many do you have? I have, uh, well, there was eight of us. Uh, we lost my youngest sister, yeah, but I have, name? her name was June Dotson. June she Dotson. passed uh, about three years ago with cancer. Well, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, there's seven of us still going. There's John, Jerry, Joan, Jay, Jeff, and Joe. All right. All J's. <laughs> let's, let's get down through those and tell me uh, what their ages are. John's 80, Jerry's 76, Joan uh, is 70, she'll be 71 next in October, Jay will be 69 this month, Joe will be 60, he just turned 66, and Jeff uh, just turned 65. Uh, do any of them live in the general area? All of them do, except for John. He lives in Texas. Right, John being 80, uh, is he retired? Oh, absolutely. What yeah. did he do? He worked for Armco Steel. He up, was in middle, a, up in Middletown? Mm -hmm. He worked in her R&D department. Okay. And uh, he retired from there, and his, uh, he lives with his daughter now. Was he in the military at all? No, he, he was in college. He was a lucky one. He got to go to college. All right. And how about Jerry? Jerry, 76. Mm -hmm. He retired? Yes. Sure from is. where? Uh, he retired from, uh, let's see, uh, Economy Lennon, I believe. Economy Lennon. And was, where was that? In Cincinnati? No, that was up in uh, Columbus, Grove City area. Okay. Uh, and uh, Joan, she's 69, does yeah. she work outside the home? Nope, she's been a housewife ever since she's been married. Right. What, did her hus what was her husband's name? Donald Claiborne. What, what did he do? He was general manager for Arm, uh, Upsco uh, Lennon out of Youngstown. All right. Uh, and Jay, Jay 68, is he still working? No, he's retired from the post office. He had 40 years with post office after he came home from the service. And what uh, post office where? Over in Newport. Newport, Kentucky? Mm, yes, sir. Uh, and what service was he in? He was in the Army. Uh, do you know approximately what his service dates were? <sighs> or at least the decade that he was in? He was in 60, 
he, uh, I think he went in 69, and uh, he's the one that was uh, wounded in Vietnam. Right. He's a Vietnam vet, uh, okay. uh, Purple we, Heart recipient. Uh, yeah. We talked a little bit about him before we got on camera. Maybe we can get him to give us an interview. I'm going to try. He would seem like he was enthused about it. Good. So we'll see. Um, uh, how about Joe? What did uh, what, what Joe do? Joe was in the Army. Uh, he was a photographer at, uh, in Arizona. And he never left the state. He spent his whole tour in Arizona. Okay. What was his occupation outside of service? Mil uh, excuse me, post office. He retired from the post office. Okay. Uh, and June's deceased. Uh, well, I think that pretty well covers. Jeff. Uh, how, about, how about yourself? Uh, you get Jeff on there? Pardon? Jeff. Uh, Jeff, uh, okay. Jeff is 65. Right? Yes, he, he was in the Air Force for eight years. And uh, he just retired from Mazak Machinery over in uh, Florence, Kentucky. Uh, what, what kind of work did he do for them? He was a machinist, supervisor. Right. And uh, where was he in the service? He was in Alaska, uh, Florida, Nevada. I think that's the only three places he was. All right. Uh, tell us uh, about yourself and your education. Uh, Where'd you go to grade school and then high went to school, school over in Dayton, Kentucky? Uh, I dropped out of high school, got my GED in the military. And when you dropped out of high school, what did you do? I went into the military. And you were how old? <laughs> One day after I turned 17. Of course, in, you needed your folks. Uh, oh, absolutely. Permission. Mom and Dad had to sign, and they knew it was the best for me. Okay. So, yeah, I was a <laughs> young kid. <laughs> So you didn't have any problems getting their permission? Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, when you, uh, um, while you were in the service, did you have any further education? Yes, I went ahead and got <laughs> associates in general management during my 20-year career, over, over 20 years, but I got it. Okay, at various universities? Yeah, University of Maryland was the big one. That's, that's most, I've been to, uh, uh, I went Riddle Aeronautics out of uh, Florida. I did uh, UC uh, um, Davis. And these were all courses that were given to us on post. And not, I did not go to the campus. So UC Davis is University of Cal California? California, Davis. yeah, when I was at Fort Orb. Um, so when you, you enlisted at, at age 17, where did you enlist? In Covington, Kentucky. And where, where did you go? Went to Fort Knox. How long were you at Fort Knox? Uh, basic training, about 10 weeks. Then where were you assigned? And then I went to Fort Sam Houston, Texas for medical training. And once I got through my training, I went to Fort Raleigh, Kansas, 1st Infantry Division for about a year. Well, how long was your medical training? Uh, medical training was 12 weeks. So Become a corpsman. Did, did, were you a corpsman? Yes, I was, first time in. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then where did you go after? Went to Fort Rally, Kansas. How long uh, were you there? About nine months. Then I got transferred to Germany. What was your training at Fort Rally? I was still a corpsman. I was a medic. Well, Signed to an a, a artillery battalion. And what years are we talking about there? Uh, 62 to 63. During that period of time, uh, did you have any veterans that were coming over from Vietnam? No, not that early, there wasn't. Did you have any veterans that you were taking care of? Well, I was a corpsman. I was mainly like aid station. Now, when I went to Germany, uh, I worked for the uh, um, 121st Evac Hospital, and there I saw some Kore Korean vets that were still in the military. That was in 63 to 65. And there was a couple of World War II that were still in the military that I took care of well, as a, a medic in the hospital. So what, what kind of wounds or conditions did you treat just, on these fellows? Oh, just uh, operation appendicitis. No, no medical or no uh, wartime kind of wounds. This was all during the peacetime at that time and, and just general conditions, anything from appendicitis to uh, 
broken arm or broken leg, something like that. Nothing that was uh, carry over from military service? No, 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 no. What, where were you stationed in Germany? Uh, and the hospital was down in Augsburg, Germany. How did you get to Germany from the States? <laughs> On a ship. <laughs> you remember the name of the ship? The Buckner. Buckner? The USS Buckner. B-U-C-K-N-E-R? B-U-C-K-L-E-R. L-E-R, Buckner. Or N-E-R, excuse me, yeah. All right, and uh, where, did, us, uh, where did you sail from? Uh, New Jersey, Bay of New Jersey. How took, long did it take you to come? <laughs> took us, uh, I think, 14 days to get across through the North Atlantic, over to Breverhaven, Germany. Okay. And once there, they put us on trains, and that's where I ended up down in Augsburg, Germany. What, what unit were you in at that time? I wasn't. Well, I was in the 1st Infantry Division when they transferred me. Okay. But once I got to Germany, I was in USARA with the United States Army Europe. All right. And I was assigned that uh, with them at the hospital. Uh, what was your rank then? When I, I was a PFC when I first got there. And when I left, I was a, I was a specialist E4. That's when I got out. I was an E4 at that time. All right. Uh, did, did you... Uh um, how long were you over in Germany? About 23 months, first time. And uh, did you, uh, I got your DD-214, did, you, uh, did you go out while you were in Germany? Uh, as far as? Were you released from service? No, well, we got back on another ship <laughs> called the uh, Geiger. And I got released in Bayet, New Jersey. When it landed, we, we were uh, uh, separated at that time from the military. Was that another two week uh, trip back? Uh, I think it was only about 12 days coming back. All right. So what did you do after you landed uh, back in the States? I uh, got uh, my honorable discharge and went to the airport and come home. Let's, let's go back a little bit. Uh, before you were assigned overseas, did you have any leaves to come home? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, Prior to going to Germany, I, I, I got 30 days leave to come home. All right. And then I went to Germany, and I, was, I didn't come back home again until my tour was up. Have you been married? Been married twice. And what was your, when were you first married? 1966, I first married. So after you got out of service then you got married? Right. And what was her name? Her name was Linda. And we were divorced in 1969. Did you and Linda have children? Yes, we had two daughters. Uh, well, Julie, who, God love her, she's deceased, my oldest daughter. I'm sorry to hear that. And then uh, my daughter, Melissa, and she still lives over in Earl Langer. Uh, what happened to your older one? I think COPD. Uh, she had quite a few medical problems. And How old was she? She, she would have been 53. She was 52 when she passed. Oh, shoot. And your youngest daughter is living in Kentucky? And then I had another daughter from my, my next marriage, my daughter Jamie. Well, Melissa, yeah, she still lives over in Erlanger. And how old is she? 50, she just turned, geez, just turned 51. And uh, what's her last name? Her last name is Perkins. Perkins? Melissa Perkins, yep. Her, she married to a gentleman named Tony Perkins. Wasn't there, a, wasn't there a movie star, Tony Perkins? I don't know. I think you're right. I think it was. Uh, so what does Tony do? Is he employed? Uh, I, yeah, he's employed, but I don't know where at right now. How about your daughter? Does she work outside the home? She works for uh, uh, Earl Langer uh, School. She's a receptionist in the, uh, in the office. Do, do either one of those girls, did they have any children? Yes, I have. Uh, Missy had uh, three. Jack, my grandson Chris, my grandson Jeffrey, and my granddaughter Melissa. How old are they? Whew. This is a test. Yeah, you're right. Uh, God, Chris is, uh, I guess he's 33 now. Uh, Jeffrey's 26, I believe, and uh, Alyssa's 24. And do they live in the area? Yes. Well, no, Chris lives in Pittsburgh. Uh, Jeff and uh, Melissa, or Alyssa live here. All right, and is she married? No, 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 no. And, and your second wife, what was her name? Her name was Connie. And what was her last name? 
Megason, M-E-G-G-I-N-S-O-N. And where was, uh, how'd you meet your first wife? Tell you the truth, I don't remember. <laughs> how about your second wife, where did you meet uh, her? She was my secretary when I worked in Florida. Okay. And I met her and uh, we got married in 1974 and uh, had a daughter, Jamie, who was born in 78. And we got divorced in 1998, we were divorced. All right, and where's Jamie, where's Jamie lives? Jamie lives over in uh, Covington. And how old is Jamie about now? Jamie just turned, uh, let's see, 78. She'll be 41 in December. Does she work outside the home? Yeah, she works for a group of doctors over in Anderson Township. All right. Her husband's name's uh, Charlie Mays, and he has his own concrete business. He's in Kentucky? Constructing. Well, Kentucky, Ohio, it's just anywhere. All right. Uh, well, I think that pretty well covers the family. Uh, well, my two grandsons from, my grandson from Charlie and uh, my daughter Jamie is Trenton. Okay. And he just went in the military. He's Where'd at Fort you? Jackson, South Carolina right now in training. What branch did he go in? Army. And then my, <laughs> my granddaughter Haley, she's a senior in high school out of Simon Kenton High School. Okay, Simon Kenton is where? It's over up, uh, it's outside of Covington. All right. So, uh, your, your grandson, what precipitated him going into the Army? Is this something he always wanted to do? Well, he decided he didn't want to go to college and run up a big student loan debt. All right. So he said, well, I just want to go in the military, earn, uh, learn a career, learn a trade, and then when I get out, I won't, you know, I won't have that big college debt. He's a pretty, pretty sharp kid. Good. Yeah. He's so, going to be a diesel mechanic. So when you, uh, when you got out from the first term, mm -hmm. uh, where did you start working? Abbott Lennon. Where was that? Over in Cincinnati, on Back Street in Cincinnati. What did you do for Abbott? I was a route driver. And how long did you work for Abbott? About, uh, about eight years. And then what did you do? I moved to Florida. Where? Florida, down in Gainesville, Florida. And what and precipitated you going to Florida? Well, uh, Connie, I married her. We were trying to get her children back. Okay. So we moved from uh, Kentucky to Florida, from Florida to North Carolina, and finally back to Kentucky. Okay. So how long were you in Florida? Oh, about a year. I worked for National Linen. What did you do for or National Or Pan American Linen. I'm sorry. I was a terminal manager for Pan American Linen. Was that in Gainesville? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gainesville. So you left Florida and you came back to Kentucky? No, we went to Thomasville, North Carolina. That's right. And I worked for National Linen there for about, about 18 months. What did you do for National? Same thing, Ralph Drive, Ralph Sale, or Ralph Driver, Linen Company. What took you from Florida to North Carolina? Just trying to find a lawyer that would take her case. All right. And evidently it didn't happen, so. We decided to come back to Kentucky. All right. And that's when I went back into the military in 77. So did you go back into the Army? Yep, right and, back into the Army. And where did, you, where did you go? Well, they had what they call Minuteman retraining. So I went to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri for four weeks training because I was out for 12 years prior to going back in. And I was there for about about four weeks, then I was transferred to Fort Lee, Virginia for my, uh, or for my AIT, which is my training, to become a supply man. So you didn't have any more uh, to do with being a corpsman at that point? No, day. no, I completely got out of the medical side and went into logistics. Uh, was there any reason why you switched from uh, the medical? I just didn't want, to, did, didn't want to get back in the medical field. I wanted something different. Okay. And, uh, so I went into supply. So when you went into logistics and you were training at where, Fort Lee? Fort Lee, Virginia. How long was that? Uh, it was 10 weeks. From that uh, 10 weeks, where did you go? Fort Knox. Uh, for uh, about a year, then they transferred me back over to Germany. Where did you go in Germany? Hanau, Germany. And how, 
How'd you get from the States over to Germany this time? Flew. <laughs> Where did you fly from? Uh, well, I flew, I, I went to Charleston, South Carolina, and then I got on a, a military transport, and we flew into uh, Frankfurt. Then from, well, Hanau's only about, oh, 30 miles from Frankfurt. All right. And then I got picked up there and went to my unit. It was a 205th Transportation Battalion, which was an aviation repair battalion. And uh, I was there for three years. So what did you do with regard to the aviation repair? I was a supply. All right. Uh, made sure I'm, for the units, not for the aviation battalion per se, but I took care of, of the three units we had there where were maintenance companies. So you you're supplying what? Anything they needed, materials? basically. Materials, uh, MREs, but that back then they were C rations and... Uh, so what does MRE stand for? <laughs> meal ready to eat. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I just wanted to yeah. explain that to the yeah. viewers. And uh, I was there three years and they transferred me to, transferred me to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Well, before that, let's talk a little bit more about Germany. Okay. Uh, when you were in Germany, did you have any time off that you could do any sightseeing or traveling? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, the first time I was over there from 62 to 65, I went to every major capital. I went to Paris, I went to Rome, I went to Vienna, I went to, well, it wasn't Berlin, it wasn't the capital, Nuremberg was, I believe it, that Heidelberg was. Uh, I've been to London. Uh, Amsterdam, been to Zurich, Switzerland, been to Salzburg, Austria, been all over Europe. But that time we had the Iron Curtain, so I couldn't. During your, during your first term there, uh, you know, we're within 20 years of uh, World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, did you travel and see any of the concentration camps? I did go to Dachau. I've been there. Uh, first time I went to Dachau, they still had the barracks. All right. And uh, it's, it's kind of an eerie feeling when you walk into that place. Uh, Did you go with a group or by No, yourself? no, me and a guy named by the name of Ernie Spain. We got us a Europe pass and we just traveled all over Europe for 15 days. And uh, that back how was, it was, uh, like I said, a solid experience if you ever had to go there. Well, I've just seen it on TV, no, but being there is a totally different thing. Yeah, I mean, you walk in, and well, they have a huge museum there, of course, for the ones that were killed there. But it's the oldest concentration camp. It was established in 1933. It was the first concentration camp, and of course, at that time, uh, they were using it for political prisoners and the insane and before they actually started. The undesirables. Undesirables, now you got undesirables on his party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you were there, the, the, the first tour, uh, did you have any interaction with any of the German citizens? Oh yeah, we had a German national that worked for us. He, he was a POW in World War II. Uh, did he, he tell you where he was a prisoner? Somewhere over here in the States. And uh, Mr. He, Fisher was his name. Did he talk much about that? No, he just said he was glad he was a POW. <laughs> he said he made it home, of course. Uh, and uh, I had some German nationalists that worked for us at the hospital. And of course, you, once you go up the compound, you get to meet the German nationals in the guest house, which is uh, like a cafe. And did they treat you all right? Oh, yeah. They treated us fair. I mean, okay. uh, there was some, of course, they didn't want us there. And I can't blame them, but hey, at that time, Right. You're talking 63, it wasn't that far after. So the people that uh, had any uh, animosity toward you, were they the older people or younger? No, they were the younger ones. No, no, the older people, they, the ones who lived through the war, they, uh, they were glad they were there, showed us a lot of respect. Good. Uh, but right. no, it was a younger generation. That's what right. it was. Now let's go to the second time you were over there. Okay. Uh, did, uh, did you have any interaction with the uh, Germans? Not so much. I had my family with me that time. Good. My wife and my daughter. And, uh, Did you live on base? Oh, yeah. We lived on the, on the concern. What, what kind of accommodations did you have for the family? We had a, 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 they're like apartments. Uh, I had a two-bedroom apartment, and everything was furnished. Uh, but they were nice. And, of course, living on an economy can get 
pretty hairy over there if you don't know the language and and everything like that. But yeah, they, they were nice. They were did, nice. Did you pick up any German language at all? A uh, little. I could say, give me a beer or, <laughs> or how much. <laughs> Ein beer bitte. Ein beer bitte for Phil Costa bitte. And uh, yeah, we picked up a few, few little words over there. Uh -huh. the second time over there, I was more <laughs> settled down because I had my family. Yeah. First time I was young and dumb. <laughs> Partied a little. So did you have a chance to take your family on any sightseeing? Yes, uh, we went to uh, Belgium. We went to London. Where'd you go in Belgium? Uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Belgium, in a yeah. Blue Delta area there, and got to see the White Cliffs of Dover. We went to London. Uh, we found the Garmisch and Birches Garden, which at that time were uh, uh, military retreats where you could take your family. They had hotels and everything down there. Okay. Been down there a few times. That was real nice. That's uh -huh. right there in the Alps. It was beautiful. And that's about all the traveling we did there. And when you did your traveling, was it by train, car, bus? Bus. It was a tour bus. And, uh -huh. you, you know, they take and go with that. How the kids liked it? Well, my baby was only two years old, a year two. old, two years old. Okay. Jamie. Yeah. How'd your wife like it? She loved it. Well, being away from home, of course. Oh, but sure. you make friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you live on, you live on post, and you make friends. And we we had some pretty 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 good friends while we were over there. What What would your day be like when you were over there in uh, the supplies? Well, you get up at uh, five thirty, six o'clock. You go do PT, which is physical training, which is calcetics and run. Every day? Yeah, five days a week, Monday through Friday. And then uh, you go back to your house, shower and shave, be back for unit formations, nine o'clock. And then your work day started. And you usually work nine to five or nine to six. Depends on how much work you had to get done. But I lived uh, probably a block from where I worked. Well, how would, uh, how would you spend your evenings while you were over there? <laughs> well. Uh, movies, basically, you couldn't, they had TV, they had AFM, Armed Forces Network, but that was limited <laughs> to what you watched. Did they have on base theater or did you have to Yeah, we had, our, we had a movie theater right there on the, right concern where I was uh, living. How close were you from town? Right there. And I was right there, right outside uh, the concern. Okay. So, and we, we did get out and very around town see things, but uh, it's mainly just stayed on post and just congregated with the, uh, the GIs and their wives. So uh, did anything unusual happen during your uh, experiences either time in Germany? No, no, it's pretty, pretty routine, right. nothing, nothing exciting, shall I say, happened. Okay. So uh, you, you get home from Germany and we've, we've been through uh, some of your jobs and uh, when you finally retired, when was that? 95. And uh, then what did you do? Whew, I went to work for Mike Sells Potato Chip Company as a facility manager. And Mike Sells Potato Chips is in Dayton. Dayton, May Ohio. May we had a distribution center out in Springdale and uh, we had 22 routes that ran out of there. And uh, we had a pretty good sized warehouse. And I did that for about 10 years. And said, well, I found out I was vested, so I retired. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked a little bit beforehand. It's yeah. not, of no interest to anybody watching this interview, but I worked for Mike Sells when I was in my yeah. 20s. Yeah, that's worked, what you were telling me. Yeah. Worked in the warehouse. Yeah. Um, so what? What do you do in, in retirement? What, what have you been doing to keep active? Play golf. I love to play golf. I go fishing with my brother. And uh, I have a fiance. Now, which brother do you fish with? Jerry, Jerry. and Jeff. Oh, okay. And uh, my brother-in-law, Donna, come occasionally. And uh, my brother, Joe. We like to get together and fish. Where, where do you fish mostly? There's a little community park over in Alexandria, Kentucky. It's got a nice lake there that uh, you can sit and just relax all day not have to worry about nothing fishing's one thing catching's another well we catch and release we, we don't keep them <laughs> just, just for the fun of it and uh but it, it 
just a relaxing life. You know, did, you, did you fish as a child? Oh, absolutely. Lived on that river in Dayton, Kentucky, which is right on the river. Uh -huh. We were raised on that river. I mean, every chance we got, we'd be down there fishing. And how about golf? When did you take up golf? Uh, basically, when I started back in the military, I played, uh, played golf uh, all over the world. Played in Korea, played in Germany, <laughs> uh, Alaska. Started tea time, two o'clock in the morning in Alaska. Well, when were you in Alaska? Uh, let's see. When I come back from Germany, I went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to 101st uh, Air Force Air Assault now. But we were the first uh, infantry company to cohort, which means we all go as one unit to Alaska. So the whole company packed up and went to Alaska. What year are we talking about then? 80, see I just got back from Germany, 83. Where did you go in Alaska? Anchorage, Fort Richardson, Alaska. It's right outside of, well, it's right there in, Anch uh, in Anchorage, Alaska. Were you still in supply then? Oh yeah, well, I was supply sergeant for the uh, infantry unit that left and went up there. So uh, how long were you there, a year? No, three years. Three years in Alaska? Yeah, yeah. Well, after 18 months, see when these soldiers came in, they were infantry, they had a three-year obligation. We had 18 months at Fort Campbell, then they had 18 months in Alaska. So after three years, they disbanded, and I went to work for a unit called the 452nd MI Detachment. What, so, was, what did that stand for? Military Intelligence. Okay. And when they, basically uh, modern Russian traffic on the, you know, on the coast at Bering Strait there. But I, I was in supply there, so okay. I don't know what they did. <laughs> well, what, uh, How'd you like Alaska compared to Germany? Loved Alaska. I would have stayed there forever if they'd let me. Do you like that better in Germany? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What I, was it about Alaska that you liked? So clean, so pure, so beautiful. I mean, I look out my kitchen window and see the mountains. In summertime, there'd be still snow on them. Of course, wintertime, eh, <laughs> it gets a little rough, but you learn to live with it. You learn to, and uh, I loved it up there, fishing. Caught me a 63-pound king salmon. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. I didn't hunt. I, I was never a hunter. But boy, when it come to fishing, they had lakes there where you could just look and see the bottom. The water was so clear because there's no, no uh, motor boats on the lakes or nothing up there. Well, uh, when you were up in Alaska, what was your week like? Was it another five-day week? Or did you work? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, when I was in the infantry for the first 18 months, it's, uh, we did a lot of maneuvers north of uh, uh, Fairbanks up at uh, what they call the Brooks Range. And that was quite an experience. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, you'd be sitting there and it'd be like 10 below zero, and an hour later you'd have a whiteout and it'd be 40 below zero. So you learn to live in 10 man tents. We had what we called Yukon stoves, which were stoves that you put in these 10 man tents and uh, keep you warm. And how long will you be out there on that maneuver? It depends, 14 days, 29 days, just whatever budget call would allow us to go out for. And what were the purpose of those maneuvers? Training, just, I was in supply, so I was what we'd call rear echelon, which means I'd be in the back. And, but the infantry guys would be out there training. But you still had to go out there. Well, yeah, they had to go with them, absolutely. They had to have supplies, so right. food and, and uh, clothing and area, or not clothing, but food and. Well, how would, how would you get from, from the, uh, the home base out to the maneuver site? They would fly us on uh, uh, C-130s. Oh, airplanes? Then we'd get into a Chinook. Uh, then from a Chinook, they'd take us up to the, and drop us. All right. And that was. <laughs> That was fun too. Did you have any uh, unusual experiences in the helicopters? No, no, just, got, it was funny when you get into Chinook, the, uh, 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 the flight crew would say, if you don't see any leaks, don't get on it. That was a going joke. So everybody would be looking for some kind of a leak on the helicopter. <laughs> he said that was a going joke. If you don't see a leak, don't get on it. So uh, them Chinooks, and they, hell, they take 
30, 40 of us at a time. Whoa. And put us up there. But it, it was quite an experience working with them young boys like that in the infantry because uh, they were all 18, 19, 20 years old. They were all kids and they... How'd they treat you as the old man? Oh, they, they took care of the supply sergeant. <laughs> they needed something and they had to come to me. They didn't want me to be upset with them. <laughs> but yeah, they were all good kids, good boys. Good, yeah. good. So from Alaska then, where we go? I went to Fort Ord, California, to the 7th Infantry Division. What'd you do at Ord? Uh, I started out with an s and Battalion, which is Supply and Transport Battalion. And after about so 14 months, I went to work for the Inspector General's office for my last three and a half years there. In Fort, at Fort Ord? At Fort Ord, yes. And then from there? Korea. Went to Korea. Yeah, I went to Korea. Where'd you go in Korea? Yeah, it was south of Seoul. I was with an MI, another military, uh, 451st Military Battalion. And uh, it was there a year. I worked in the, uh, the S-4, which is supply for the units. You have your company units, then you have your S-4. And your S-4 is where all the company supply go for money and, and things like that. We had to bless all their all the expenditures, so we say, which anything they wanted to order, they had come through us. And, uh, and I worked there oh, about a, a year, and then I come back and went to uh, finish my career with the 172nd uh, ARCOM in Indianapolis, Indiana. Why would you like Korea as no, opposed to Germany and Alaska? Did not one did not like Korea, away from my family. Uh, and just, I don't know, I just, I just didn't like Korea. How about the conditions, other than not being a, with your family, what, what about the con conditions? Conditions were good. I mean, you know, you know well, you lived on post, of course, yeah. and we had modern housing, we had good, had good dining facility, and uh, it, was, it was nice. How about the weather? Well, winters are bad. I mean, if it snowed, you lost electricity. <laughs> so, I mean, but it was fun. So but, what, did you have uh, backup for when uh, you had bad snow? Oh yeah, well, the post itself had their own uh, Electric power supply. Power source. But, uh, well, you had to, because uh, uh, you didn't drink the water or go off post or anything like that. And I stayed particularly on post. I, had, I didn't have to get off post for nothing. Did you have any Koreans working with you? Yep, there was about seven nationals worked with us. And uh, how did you treat them? How did they treat you? We were common, common respect for each other. Both of us, you know, they respected us and we respected them. Were they youngsters or were they middle-aged? or? No, they, they were women. We women. had one, two, we had three women working in the office and out in the warehouse we had uh, four uh, Korean nationals. Did they all speak English pretty well? Basically, yeah, most of them did. Well, they've been working for the military forever, so, you know. And, but they were, they were good people. Did you pick up any Korean? Nope. <laughs> didn't no reason to. I didn't go nowhere to pick it up. All right. How about the Germans you worked with over in Germany? Were they all English speaking? Oh, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Fisher. Now, uh, when I was over there the second time, uh, we didn't have any German nationals. Oh, we had, we had uh, American uh, technicians come over for the helicopter repair, but no German nationals were, I don't think they were permitted, I don't know, okay. but we did not have any. How about when you were in Alaska, did you meet any of the native Alaskans? <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, the guards would come down from Alaska, the uh, Alaska Na Guard, and Reserve or National Guard, and they would come in, and what we had was called TA-50, which was your field equipment, which was your new boots, your Mickey Mouse boots, which were winter boots, uh, uniforms and things like that. And it was funny because I'd have to hold a picture up, and he'd say, uh, or uh. <laughs> Either he had or he didn't have it. If he didn't have it, then I'd have to do a, uh, uh, charge him for it. And it was funny because it's, uh, they had a, odor about them, shall we say. Go, well, <laughs> well, yeah. Living in those conditions, you could understand that. Yeah. Oh, well, they, very seldom. They come in once a year for two weeks down to Fort Richardson. 
And they were quite a group, quite a group of guys. How, how many would come at a time? I, I would think a unit, maybe, maybe 60, 70 of them would come at one time. And where would they stay? They <laughs> fenced off a compound and put them in there in tents because uh, they, uh, they liked to drink and they liked to party and uh, they could get a little hairy at times. But they were, they were all most good people, good hardware. But did you have any unusual incidents when no, they came down? No, no, no. Uh-uh. They just, you know, they're, they're coming out of the bush into a city and, you know. And Having a good time. Yep, that's what they were there for. Oh, where were they from in Alaska? Mainly up on Bering Strait, north, uh, northwestern part up there in the Bering Straits and them villages up in that area. Because if th anything would have happened to Russia when they came, they figured they were going to come across the Bering Strait. Uh-huh. But, uh. That's where most of them were assigned, but they were all over the state. Yeah. I mean, you're uh, Alaska National Guard or Alaska Reserve, but they were all over the state. How would they come into your, your post? Uh, would they come in? Bus uh, in mainly. Buses? Yeah, they bus them in. It might take them a day and a half, two days to get them in there, but I don't think a lot of them wanted to fly. I mean, <laughs> they just, no, no, you're not putting me up in that thing. And so we, we, well, Bus them in. Uh -huh. How about uh, nighttime? Did you? What kind of experiences did you have at night? Did you have northern lights? And did oh you have yeah, I've seen the northern hours? lights at Brook Range many a time. Beautiful. But you got to realize in Alaska, in, in the winter time, you might get three, maybe four inch, or four hours of daylight, and that's it. I mean, I'd be down in my supply room, and it'd be two or three days. I never see daylight. It'd be dark when I get down. It's dark when I get out. But on the other hand, in the summer, it don't get dark. That's what I said. I, I get out and play golf at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, what's like dust, you know, like when the sun first goes down? Yeah. That's what it's like. And it's, <laughs> it's different. You have to put tin foils on your windows or your kids yeah. wouldn't go to sleep because, you know, hey, it ain't dark. I ain't going to bed. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it's kind of tough on the family at times because there's such a thing as cabin fever for yeah. the women and the children, and you got to get them out during the winter. Uh, we do sled riding. Their wife and I would be on bowling leagues, but you, you just, because women would, uh, and families would just, you got to get them out. Yeah, that'd be tough on them. Being oh, it is. Cooped I mean, up all the time. Oh, you got to get them out. And for for entertainment, did, uh, was the bowling and stuff on base? Or oh yeah, have... oh yeah, it's on base. We had a theater on base. We had a bowling alleys, uh, ball fields, ice uh, ice skating rink. I mean, it was, and it was right next door to Eldendorf Air Force Base. Also, they were connected. They were That's jointed, it. and so I mean, you'd go over to the air base and and see things, and it, you just get out, you'd be fine. The times you were up there in Alaska it was. Was there any uh, impending problem with Russia that uh, yeah, you yeah. became aware of? Yeah. I wouldn't know anyway, because I could say when I was with the MI, I was in supply. I was restricted from everything else, because you had to have a TS at that time, and I didn't have it, which was a top secret clearance. Okay. And I did not have one. Now, I got one when I went to Korea. When I was a, with the military intelligence battalion over there, I had to get a top secret clearance to get inside the compound. Do you have any problems with North Korea threats? Not that I know of. Rumor was when uh, Desert Storm hit, now I don't know how true this is, but they said that uh, North Korea massed 635,000 soldiers along the 38th parallel when all our main divisions were in the Middle East by, on Desert Storm. So again, I don't know. I can't verify that or say yay or nay. I don't know for sure. Did you ever get up to uh, the DMZ? No, never did. Never made the DMZ. Did you do any traveling around to Korea? No. I spent my year there, six months, come home for 30 days, went back, spent my last five months to come home. And I wasn't real happy over there, but I was a soldier and I had to do what I'm told to do. Uh, did you get a chance to go to Japan? No, did not go to Japan. Didn't leave Korea, only to come home and go back. And that's a trip, that's a 14-hour plane ride from Seoul to Seattle. 
And for 14 hours, there ain't too much you can do on a plane. <laughs> right. And then, and then from Seattle, you would fly back to where, Cincinnati? No, I, well, at that time, we, uh, we were living in Florida at Gainesville again. Oh, yeah, that's, that's where we bought a home down there before I left for Korea, because that's where we were going to retire. And uh, So that was another how many hours? From oh, Lord. I'd have to fly into Atlanta. Then from Atlanta into Gainesville. So you're probably talking another six, seven hours. Yeah. So you're talking like 20 hours on flight time. But uh, then when I come back from Korea, I went to work in Indianapolis in uh, Reserve ARCOM, Army Command Reserve Unit up there. We, at that time, there was 122 units assigned to the R ARCOM. Yeah. Uh, and I was. Uh, active military and reserve status. In other words, I was, it was a reserve unit, but I was active military. Uh-huh, and, and where, were you, where was it located in relation Fort to Fort Benjamin that? Harrison, Indiana. Where is that from, Indy? Uh, it's a little, I believe it's a little northeast uh, from uh, Indy, and oh. I did that for four years. For four years? Yeah, until I retired. I went all over states of uh, uh, Indiana and Michigan on reserve units. I worked for uh, what they call desk logs, what's uh, with division logistics. We go check units and things like that. But they, uh, when I left, I think when I retired, we were down to, oh shoot, maybe 50 units hmm. because of the army reassignment and base closures. And they were clo just shutting these units down left and right. Is that base still open as of today? Yeah, I believe, well, it's still got the finance center up there, uh, but I don't think there's too many African military on it anymore. No I think they pretty well closed it down. But they have a big finance office building up there. It's a huge building. What kind of uh, medals or commendations did you, did you have? <sighs> well, I received two meritorious service awards. I received uh, five um, uh, Army Commendation Medals. I had Overseas Medal, I had National Defense Medal, Good Conduct Medal, uh, Leadership Award uh, Medal for schooling. I had, had a three on that, which was uh, the highest I could get. And I, I don't know what all, a few more on there, I guess. Meritorious Service Medals were my big ones. They were, they were yeah, a high award for me. They were above the Army Accommodation Medals. Uh, on here, uh, NCO Professional Development Ribbon mm. with uh, number three? That's a third. You have what you call basic uh, in your MOS, basic then you have uh, ANOC, then you have, uh, there, that, let me get this right, you have BASIC, BNOC, and then ANOC. ANOC is when you're uh, in line for higher promotions, you gotta go to that particular school to learn. And those schools were, I did a lot of schooling while I was in there. IG school in Washington, D.C. I think it was six or eight weeks. That was, that was quite a trip too. They put you up in apartments and it wasn't bad. <laughs> but you, you didn't like the medic. Uh, you didn't want to follow the- No, I did not want to go back into medical career because working in the hospital, I seen, you know, no, no combat injuries, but you see things and you just, you know, you just don't want to do it no more. Yeah. And just, and what you have to put up with and, and just, so I decided, well, I'll just go into logistics and the supply. And well, was there anything I haven't asked you about that? Uh, no, sir, you pretty well covered it. Uh, I think I really appreciate it. Well, Brian, uh, you probably have some questions. I think I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I was just wondering, you know, when you uh, joined the, the, the Army, mm -hmm. why the Army, why not Air Force and Navy? <laughs> I don't think I really had the education to get into the Air Force and the Navy at the time. You know, as a dropout, a high school dropout. Uh, the Army, if you were breathing, you were warm, they'd take you. And they took me. <laughs> did, 
Do you have anybody in your family that had been in the military before you? Were you the first? No, my brother, Jerry, he was in the Air Force. He went in 1960. And then uh, I went in the Army, then followed by my brother Jay, my brother Joe, and then my youngest brother Jeff went into the Air Force. So three Army, two Air Force? Right. Army agents. The best. Is there competition between you? Guys? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We outnumber them three to two. <laughs> and we have our, our monthly card games. We all get together and play poker once a month, and uh, we have a lot of fun. We can do it. Thank God we can do it. And uh, we all got our health, and because uh, you just don't know. When I lost my daughter, I thought, wow. Well, you. Enjoy life, and we do. We fish, we play golf. I play golf every week with one of my brothers, and uh, we go fishing, and we try to get, matter of fact, we just had a big family reunion Sunday when we all got together, and uh, I got 15, soon to be 16, great grandkids. Uh, well, did you? Uh, yeah. So how far along in your training did you know you were gonna be a corpsman? Is that something you were interested in? Well, no, in when I first went in, that's what they offered me. Okay. Uh, what, what, so you want to be a medic? I thought, what's a medic? <laughs> he said, well, you'll be a corpsman, you'll go to Fort Sandy. I said, Fort Texas, oh, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Little did I know. But, uh, then when I went back in, I said, I, I don't want the medical field. He said, well, how about supply? I said, sounds good. And uh, I finished my career in logistics and supply. I did, like I said, I had four years with the Inspector General's office and breaks up the monotony of, of supply once in a while. And, uh, but so it was a great life. What was your feeling? I, mean, I guess Germany was probably the first time you went to a foreign country. Yeah, seven, well, I just turned uh, 18 when I went over there. Yeah, it was kind of scary. What were your thoughts when you first got to Germany? <laughs> I didn't know what to think. <laughs> You know, here's, here's a kid from Kentucky <laughs> over here in Germany. True story now. When I first went in, guy said, where are you from? I said, Kentucky. And he looked down to see if I had shoes on. True story. <laughs> yeah. So what year were you, did you arrive in Germany? Uh, 63. 63. Uh-huh. And, 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 uh... Had Kennedy already made his Berlin Wall speech? I don't remember. I remember where I was when he was assassinated. I was in the uh, second floor of the barracks playing cribbage with uh, another guy when they come over to radio that he had been assassinated. You never forget that. Never forget that. And when he found out he was assassinated. Of course, we went on full alert at that time because that's, I guess, that's military standard. If the president gets assassinated, <laughs> So what is that when you go full or what, what happens? That means you, you get combat ready. Uh, but I, I, it's more or less procedure more than anything, I guess. Were, were they, did they give you a, a firearm? Oh, absolutely. So go down the arm. No ammunition now. Don't, don't think that we're going to full-blown combat here. No. You're just getting your, your combat mode, what you would do in case did of they a... they give you a rifle? Or a oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They give you a rifle. Uh, gave me a, a back that M14 at that time, yeah. And you get you get ready, even though you're a medic, you know, and you're not supposed to carry arms. But that stopped in Korea when they, uh, they would wound a soldier, deliberately wound a soldier. Then when this guy came out with the big red cross on his helmet and sleeve on his arm, they kill him because they figured if they killed him, that guy's going to die anyway, and he's not going to help any other wounded ones. So after Korea, they, it's no more, you wear a uniform just like everybody else. But, uh, I guess you never made it over to, uh, to the Berlin Wall area. I, I went to Berlin, of course. In the early 60s. Yeah, well what you do, is they put you on a train, and it's a blackout train. In other words, in Frankfurt, you get on a train and all the windows are blacked out, wow. and you don't see nothing until you hit Berlin. And, then, and if you drive, they got checkpoints. And you better make your checkpoints if you drive from uh, West Germany into Berlin. But we went by train, it was blackout. And they, all the windows were blacked out. You just sit there and 
Okay, you're in Berlin. All right. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're supposed to see, but. I mean. <laughs> but how long were you? Was your visit in Germany in uh, Berlin? Just a couple of days. You know, just say, hey, I'm here. I'm out. Vandenberg Gate. And Did you get any? Yeah, you, get the, you saw that. Did yeah, you that. See the wall. Yeah, you could see the parts of the wall. No, no, well, you got that one kilometer. Well, it's particularly on the East German side, but we didn't, we didn't go over there. But it uh, was tried a, quite a thing, seen that in uh, uh, Berlin itself. And even when I was over there in 63, they were still rebuilding from the war. I was going to ask, did you yeah. see much uh, damage from World War II? No, most of it has been repaired. But there were still areas that were, you could see where World War II was hit that hadn't been reconstructed yet. But most of your big cities and everything was already back online. Did you, uh, when you were over there in the early 60s, did you have encounters with any, any top brass people, any uh, big officers or anything? No, no. no visit, nobody visiting the hospital? Did you have a spruce up for them? No, wait, wait, we were a hospital corpsman, <laughs> eh? Uh, we, I think the highest rank we ever had in the hospital was a full bird colonel, and uh, we never had any generals or nothing like that. They, they stay away from us. They stayed in Heidelberg, where all the brass was, or Frankfurt. And where were you? Where were, you, where your, your hospital was? Where and how? Where was it in relation to say uh, Heidelberg or Borna? Oh, it it was way south. We were down the Bavarian Alps. We were in Bavaria. Augsburg's in between, uh, well, I'll tell you, it's about uh, 30 miles west of Munich. Okay. It's in between Ulm and Munich. And it, it's a beautiful little city. And it, it was. And, and that's why Dachau is not too far away. No, Dachau was right, right up the road, yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, the first time I went, I saw the barracks, and I'll never forget it. I'd, you just walk in, I don't know, call me nuts or something, but you get the hair on the neck stands up. You can feel it, and you don't know what them people went through. You just... It, was it a museum at that point? Had they turned it in, or was it just open that you could... They have a museum as you go in. Well, I, yeah, I, I had gone there in 1990 yeah. as a museum, but I was wondering right. at that time in the early 60s, was it established this kind of a museum? Yeah, they had a museum. Well, the Germans wanted to take the land and farm it. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen because it's sacred ground. And uh, yeah, they had a museum in the 60s with all the bones on the wall. Remember that? Yeah. And the picture of the guy with, when they were doing the, uh, when they sent him up in space or something, how, much, how that brain would react. Yeah. Do you see them pictures on the wall? And the twins, how they would take them and oh, just brutal, nasty stuff. Yeah, I was wondering when they started developing that. I mean, it was there obviously in 1990. They, they yeah, oh yeah, it was there in 63 when I went through it, yeah. yeah. I, I guess you must have made it into, into Munich. Did you go? Oh yeah, I've been to the Oktoberfest. And, say, and, oh yeah. The, the famous beer hall down there? Yeah, the opera, uh, opera, house. opera House. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go to, you're in Germany, you gotta go to, gotta go to Munich and the Oktoberfest. Big steins of beer. I was young and dumb then, though. Let me tell you, <laughs> I couldn't do it today. And when you were at the hospital, where were you? Were you staying in barracks? Or yeah, well, the hospital had their own barracks assigned. And the hospital made like a, a big U. And the hospital was over here. Then in the center was the dental clinic. And there was a ward above the dental clinic. And on this side was the uh, barracks for the, for the soldiers. So, so that was on hospital property. So oh yeah. Kind of worked at the same place. Yeah, yeah. I could. I didn't even have to leave the building to go to work. I just walked down the hallways and. And was that on an American base? Oh yeah, called, called Flak Concern, and over there they call them concerns, and uh, that's where you and that you're inside a gated area, you know. So, of course, uh, I imagine most of them are gone now too after the drawdown. After the curtain fell, I'd love to go back to to uh, Europe and be able to go into Poland and uh, in them areas. I would love to go over and see, uh, but I'm not gonna <laughs> save my nickels and dimes to do it. <laughs> so um, obviously later you got back into the army, but how come you didn't stay with the army beyond your, your first? I tell you the truth, I I think because I was young, 
and I was away from home for three years. I just, you know, I wanted to get home. I wanted to be with family again. And uh, I think that was it. I was just young. I just didn't want to, didn't want to do it again. Yeah. And, uh, so in relate to that, how did you decide to go back in? Like how many years later was it? 77, Jimmy Carter. So it was like 11 <laughs> years later? Yeah, about, about 12 years later. Any reason why you decided to, to go back in? Jimmy Carter. The economy, everything, the way that every just everything, the way everything was going, and you know, and I thought, well, and uh, I said, hey, I think I'll give it. A, I was 32 years old when I went back in, and that, let me tell you, it was tough, but I made it. Did you have to do go back to basic training? Did you just start a new, or did you have any no? We had what we call four weeks Minuteman training at um, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Or Fort Leonard Wood, Kansas, not Leavenworth, Fort Leonard Wood. And what does that training involve? It just re that knock you know, to the military life, the new changes since you've been in. Uh, most of it's basically the same, but you know, you got to learn different things that has changed throughout the years since you got out. And it, did, you, did you have to meet certain physical requirements? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. remember where they were? Well, you had to do your PT test with. Uh, you had to run two miles in a certain amount of time, and you had to do so many push-ups, so many sit-ups. And if you didn't do that, then you go and went to remedial training, and if you still didn't do it, bye-bye. Did you find there were other guys like you who... who oh, yeah. You like, but you're not... when, when, when I went to Minuteman training back at Fort Leonard Wood, uh, everybody there was prior service. The whole outfit, we were all prior service. We had some Marines, we had some Army, we had some Navy, I had some Air Force, and we just, you know, we all come back in. Was everybody coming back in also because of Jimmy Carr? I don't know. <laughs> you didn't ask? No. No, we were just a bunch of old, old guys trying to, trying to survive. <laughs> and so you, did you request to go on supplies? Or, or oh yeah, when I, when I went to recruiter to go back in, I, I asked him what was available. And he gave me a list. I said, well, I think I'll take supply. And so when you, when you decided to join back in, where did you, did you go to a recruiting office locally here? Yeah, over in Covington. Over in Covington. I went and talked to him and went back in. Yeah, yeah I said, well, well, of course, I had to come t downtown here to the federal building, take tests and physical and everything to make sure that hey, he ain't going to die on us in two weeks or something. <laughs> But I tell you the truth, it's one of the greatest uh, decisions I ever made. I really enjoyed my military career. I did. Do you think the the reason why you ended back stationed in Germany because you had been there before, or was that just no? Difference? In the military, you go where you're needed. You're not a man. You're not a woman. You're a number, and you got a job. And wherever that job's needed, you're going to go. Uh, no, I would never request to Germany, but. You know, my, my ex-wife, she enjoyed it. She got to go out of the country and she got to see Europe. And when you went back in, you had kids at that point. I had a little girl. And how old was she? Uh, see, Jamie was only two. Oh, no, I didn't have any when I went back in. She was born to, uh, in 79 I went back in 77. Okay. So. But you had, you had kids, were you, did you have any? Yeah, I had two daughters prior to that, but they were with their mother. Okay, so my, when you were back in Germany, did you have any kids with you? Did yeah, you my baby, you? Jamie, she was, uh, let's see, she was 18 months old when she came to Germany with us. And did she ever do any schooling over there? Did no, she, no, no, she mom? was too young. Okay. She did much of her schooling. And she, <laughs> I was wondering what education system they had for dependents. Like, was oh, they, their education school? system's good over there. Well, I don't know what it is now. Would she have gone to an American school? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You have American high schools over there. Uh, again, I don't know now with the drawdown and everything that's done over there. And so when you went, went back the second time to Germany, you were in a different location than you were. Oh, the, yeah. Where oh, were yeah. you the second time? Or up in Hanau. It's up around Frankfurt. Okay. That's up in the industrial part. Uh, first time down in Bavaria, which was a farming and uh, just a beautiful area. Second time I was up in the industrial section of uh, and, and you were on an American base. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, there was one, 
there was probably three concerns around the area in Hanau. You know, you have different concerns with different units on them. And, uh, and you have a big, it's like a little city, you know, it's, it's nice. So I, I was curious, like you were, you were in there, well, you had car was there when you, when you went in and then uh, Reagan came in. Reagan had a big emphasis. Love Ronnie Reagan. And he was, had a big emphasis of, you know, obviously oh. the Soviets. I was wondering if, if you felt a shift change uh, as far as like supplies, like did you get we got what budget, we wanted. Get a bigger budget or something? Oh, and besides that, I think we got a 17% pay raise across the board, too. Because for four years, Carter didn't give a squat. And uh, Ronnie come in and different world. I mean, the military was back on the, la on the map again. And, uh, and were, you, you, were you overseas when he became president? Were you still in Germany or were you overseas? No, I was overseas. 81 when he became president. And you were still in Germany? Then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and then when did you leave Germany and you went to Alaska? No, I went from Germany to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Okay. Then from Fort Campbell to Alaska. And like I said, that we were the first uh, Army unit to transfer from one station to another as a unit, all 120 of us. Usually when you transfer, that one guy go here, another guy go there, or by... But this way, we all went together. Was that just something the Army was, was yeah, trying to Yeah, they were trying to uh, see if it'd work. In other words, keep the cohesion within a unit. And uh, I don't know if it's ever stuck or not. We ended up in Alaska. Uh, and I guess basically Alaska, we were just basically trying to make everything uh, in case the Russians come over. That was basically our presence in Alaska. Yeah, basically, yeah. But the Air Force <coughs> went ahead to handle it because, <laughs> well, they had El Norfolk, got a couple big air bases up there and there. They were pretty well equipped. <laughs> so. so when you say supplies, what were some of the, what would that include? Clothing, food, everything? Anything to do with a, mil with a soldier in the unit. That could be anything from a, a, a survival knife, to candles, to food, ammunition, uh, if anything a soldier needed to uh, maintain himself in a battlefield or in peacetime, sheets and pillowcases for their rooms, you know, clean sheets, pillowcases, blankets, just anything a soldier would need within reason. <laughs> would it be stuff like uh, mobile union stuff, I guess? Like, I don't know, tents or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Like that. That, yeah, we get tents. Yeah, absolutely. Tents and... Do you, do you go to uh, any uh, military supply uh, stores in the area here and have flashbacks? No. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would, too, to be honest with you. But, yeah, they... Uh, they it, was, it was good. I like to say... Uh, my, my daughter, matter of fact, Jamie was born in Ireland Army Hospital at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Yeah, so I had see I had one graduate in Alaska. My oldest daughter graduated in Alaska. Uh, then uh, her daughter come to live with us. One we were trying to get. She graduated out of Fort Orb, California. And then uh, Jamie, of course, she graduated Newport Central Catholic. I was retired when she got. <laughs> But it's tough on the, on the family, you know. They make friends and three years later, you're gone and you don't, don't ever hear or see them again. Is it because you went to Korea by yourself? Is that because of your security clearance or is it because you didn't want your family? I would not take my family to Korea, no. Because if, God forbid, if he ever did cross over, Seoul's what, 35 miles from DMZ. And I mean, the, the panic would be you know, just for everybody going down the peninsula, trying to get to the south end. I mean, it would just be terrible. I would not put my family in a situation like that, where, you know, God forbid something happened. I'd be here and they'd be there and I'd, I'd be worried to death about them. So I said, I'll just do my year, you <laughs> stay home. Were they back in, were they, were they here or were they in Florida when you were in Korea? They were in Florida. And yeah, we bought a home down there. We were gonna retire down there, but. How did you guys end up, uh, how did you end up coming back to Kentucky area? 
when I retired. You just decided. I'm coming home. Doing it. Did you retire in Florida? No, I'm, I said I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs> my family was here, you know, my whole, my whole family's around this area. And I thought, oh, we're going home. Well, maybe she didn't like it because three years later we got a divorce. So. <laughs> Did she stay in Florida? <laughs> yeah, she, matter of fact, she lives in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, just uh, one or two more questions. Uh -huh. I belong to American Legion, but uh, no, not as far as uh, being really active involved. Uh, uh, which where, which uh, American Legion are you part of? Which? It was the one over in Dayton, Kentucky, but dissolved because of lack of uh, membership. So I'm getting letters from the one in Newport, want me to join them down there. Mm -hmm. Curse in those days, the one in Dayton that was uh, the American <laughs> Legion. But, uh, uh, have you ever been back to Germany um, no. since your service? No. <laughs> no. Let me tell you, I've been outside the United States enough. I'm, I want to see what's here in the States. I've been all over the United States, but I want to go to the Northeast. I want to go up to Maine, Vermont. I've been all over. I don't think there's a state out West or mid States I haven't been in. And I just... Now, I've got no desire to leave the country. None. Oh, have you moved back to any of those bases that you trained at or anything? No. Like no. no. Fort Ord's closed. Yeah. They closed it. Uh, Fort Knox, I understand, pretty well drawn down. They moved everything out of there to Fort Benning, Georgia. Oh, I don't know. No. I'd like to go back down Fort Knox through the Patton Museum. They said they just re redone it, and they said it's real nice. I don't know if you've ever been there, but if you get a chance. I have, it's been a good 10, 15 years. They, I've talked to the recruiter when my grandson went in last week, and uh, he said they completely re renovated it. He said it's really nice now. So I'm going to have to get down there and go through it. It's not that far. Does, does your grandson know what he wants to do in the Army? Diesel mechanic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm I'm proud of him. He uh followed grandpa's footsteps. <laughs> he didn't want the Air Force. <laughs> well thanks. That's all my question. Okay. I just have have one uh when uh when you joined the military, uh was Jerry still in the Air Force? Yeah, first time. He got out, he went in 60 and he got out in 64. And I went in 62 and got out in 65. Yeah, he was in for two years when I joined. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you. you for the interview. I thank really you appreciate for it. Your service thank, thank you for coming down here. Yep.